a tour of historic buildings on the University of Vermont campus. We'll walk in the footsteps of artisans, architects, and a colorful character or two as we delve into UVM's rich history. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. University of Vermont was founded in 1791. Its first benefactor was Ira Allen, considered the father of the University of Vermont. Allen donated a 50-acre parcel of land to establish the school. As we'll learn, Allen has gone in and out of favor with UVM over the years, but there's no dispute that his contribution created one of the jewels in the Green Mountain State. To talk about the history of the University of Vermont, I'd like to introduce William Averett, a UVM professor emeritus. And from July to October, he leads walking tours of the campus's most historic buildings. Welcome to you. Thank you. How did you become interested in the history of UVM? Well, uh, I was always interested in Vermont history and UVM history, but I had no idea when I was teaching at the university for years how rich and deep this history is. So when I stepped down from teaching uh, in 2006, that was the same time that the Vermont State Tourism officials were approaching uh, UVM and its specially continuing education division to create a walking tour because they had analyzed tourists who uh, were saying uh, that uh, people coming from out of state wanted to learn more about Vermont history. So long story short, they asked me to do it. Uh, it was a project I put together in the following summer, uh, which is eight years ago now. Uh, we started the first walking tour. Interesting. So in a minute, we're going to visit a few of the buildings on the tour. But first, what can you tell us about the university seal? The seal is 200 years old. It uh, has a lot of interesting elements. Uh, it's, of course, uh, showing the uh, name in Latin of the University of Vermont, which is Green Mountains in Latin, uh, and the founding year 1791. What's especially uh, fun about it is it also has the official motto of the university, which in Latin means, in good old American English, uh, hard studies and hard work. It's from an ancient Roman poet uh, who is writing a poem uh, to an imaginary lazy young man who doesn't get out of bed and really do his hard work and do his hard study. So way back in the 1790s, 180s, that sort of indicated the tough love approach to uh, a university education in uh, Vermont. It seems like there's a lot going on in that seal. Is that pretty typical of university seals? Uh, most seals, yes, have a lot of symbolism attached to them. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's head over to UVM now and sample some of the sites on the tour. To start, we begin at the beginning. So we're standing here in front of uh, the Old Mill. This is probably the best well-known building on the campus of the University of Vermont. Uh, the building we see here is the second one on this site. The first one was built uh, in 1806 and burned down. Uh, in 1824. Uh, just by chance, the Congress had at the same time invited General Lafayette to come back over to the U.S. Uh, to help celebrate the coming 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. So General Lafayette came to Burlington as well as many other places in the country and he laid this cornerstone of Old Mill and you can still read it, laid by General Lafayette June 29, 1825. Uh, this building, as I said, was the second one. It was expanded in the 1880s by a generous gift of uh, Mr. John Howard, of a well-known family who has contributed a lot to the whole Burlington area. And you'll see his bust right in front of Old Mill. This new building, constructed in 1825, originally had a gold dome. But when it was expanded in the 1880s, down came the dome, the roof was raised, and a big tower was constructed. And that tower, of course, exists today. Uh, it's the symbol of the University of Vermont. You see it on signage and letterheads and all over the place. This is one of my favorite buildings. It's the uh, Billings Library Building, uh, completed in 1885. 
Designed by America's greatest architect at that time, Henry Hobson Richardson. Richardson studied architecture in Paris, France, and fell in love with medieval Romanesque architecture. And you can see that on the facade here. Very simple, uh, powerful uh, look of the Romanesque uh, architecture with the half circle uh, windows as opposed to the pointed Gothic uh, windows and so on. Uh, coming down from the top, we see a very ornate version of the seal of the university dating back to the 1790s. And then we see uh, two men's faces flanked by lions. Now, oral history tells us that these are portraits of the master woodcarver and the master stoneworker. And of course, they and their assistants produced uh, the beautiful stonework on the outside, all the carving and so on, uh, as well as the beautiful carved woodwork on the inside. In the apse of the building's library building, we see some beautiful examples of carving that Albert Whittakind and his assistants did. Uh, and they're connected uh, with the rafters. If you look at the support of this roof, you'll see that there are 16 rafters coming down and they split in two as they uh, come down uh, toward those beams. Uh, the part that's curving toward the center is coming to rest on some horizontal beams that are called hammerhead beams. Uh, and for those of you who have seen uh, the first Harry Potter movie, you'll recognize this from the dining hall uh, sequences uh, of that movie. Uh, on the outer faces of each hammerhead beam are a beautiful uh, carved uh, geometric leaves and flowers. Each one is different. So we've got 32 uh, very fine uh, carvings uh, of uh, decoration on these hammerhead beams. For me, the most beautiful uh, piece of carving in this building uh, is the fireplace and mantelpiece in this central space, all carved by Albert Whittakin and his assistants uh, out of oak. Uh, and you see that uh, there is the portrait of Mr. Frederick Billings uh, on the mantelpiece. Uh, Mr. Billings uh, was a native of Vermont, born in the area of Woodstock, and he, of course, is responsible for the very generous gift to the university that permitted the construction uh, of this building in 18. Probably UVM's most famous graduate was the psychologist philosopher John Dewey. Graduate of the university in 1879, born in Burlington, just a few blocks from the campus. After he obtained his PhD, he did path-breaking research uh, essentially into how people learn, especially children, at the University of Chicago. And he discovered something that we sort of take for granted today, that is learning by doing. John Dewey passed away in 1952. He had been born before the Civil War. So his life spanned pre-Civil War America all the way up to the nuclear age. When the second Mrs. Dewey passed away in 1970, following his wishes as well, her will uh, instructed the executor to ask the University of Vermont if it would like to be their final resting place, which of course is a great honor. And that's why today, just outside the north wall of the Ira Allen Chapel, we have the resting place uh, of the urns of uh, Dr. John Dewey and uh, Mrs. Roberta Dewey with a very simple uh, memorial stone. The Ira Allen Chapel may be the uh, most dominant building on UVM's campus because of the very tall bell tower. It was a gift of UVM graduate uh, James Wilbur, who was also an amateur historian. He did a lot of work on the life of Ira Allen, published a biography of Ira Allen, uh, donated the funds for the very fine bronze statue of Ira Allen, which is located on the green, and then in the mid-1920s donated this chapel. Uh, this building also uh, was uh, designed by America's probably greatest architectural firm at that time, the firm of McKim, Mead, and White. Ira Allen sort of fell into uh, obscurity in the 19th century. The university didn't talk too much about him. Ira had a very colorful life, had a lot of property uh, ownership difficulties. Uh, he did donate the land, most of which uh, now uh, constitutes the UVM Green in the immediate border. Uh, however, he uh, wandered away from Vermont uh, and ended up his life, uh, unfortunately, uh, in uh, dire circumstances in Philadelphia and is buried uh, in an unmarked grave. He passed away in 1814. 
Ira did found the University of Vermont de facto, uh, and we'll certainly not forget his name today in part because we've got this uh, beautiful building reminding us uh, of his accomplishments. Well, if you're just joining us, we're learning about the history of UVM from my guest, William Averett. He leads a walking tour of the campus on Saturday mornings in July through early October. How long is the tour? I mean, there's it's sort of endless, all the things that you have to talk about. It's hard to squeeze it in. It's uh, depending on people's questions and discussions. It's a pretty informal tour. Uh, an hour and a half for two hours, and I'm always happy to chat with people afterwards. There might be a couple of three people who have a, a very deep interest in one particular aspect. Uh, and I learn uh, bits and pieces over the years, too, uh, because some, some folks who are coming here are, are very, very knowledgeable about certain parts of UVM history or Vermont history in general. I'm just you know amazed by the architecture and all the detail that you don't even maybe notice or even know that it exists. When you work in a place back and forth every day you don't pay attention to it too much it's like Parisians never visit the Eiffel Tower but to step back take a moment and look at at the richness on uh, the campus especially around the old green uh, you really begin to see uh, the variety of detailing there. And so many of our viewers have seen a performance at the Royal Tyler Theater, but few know the man who gave the building its name. So who is Royal Tyler? Who is Royal Tyler? That's Royal, a man's name with two L's, not Royal like Queen Elizabeth. Uh, he was born uh, in Massachusetts in the 1750s, graduated from Harvard uh, the year that we declared independence, uh, got engaged to John Adams' daughter, uh, and John Adams uh, knew how wild he had been during his college day so vetoed that engagement. In any case, uh, he did uh, get married, uh, moved up to Vermont, became a lawyer, uh, taught jurisprudence at the University of Vermont, was named Justice of the Vermont Supreme Court. So you might ask, well, why do we name a theater department after a chief justice. Well, he also uh, wrote plays. He wrote the first professionally performed comedy ever to be performed in the United States in 1787 called The Contrast. Really? Yeah. That's uh, fascinating. It's a, a, a simple little play about uh, the contrast between English manners, and we had just broken away, of course, from mm -hmm. Great Britain, and this young, new revolutionary nation. Uh, it was wildly popular. Uh, it played in Boston, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, New York, uh, members of the first Congress, including George Washington, attended performances, and the UVM Library Special Collections Department has George Washington's signed copy of the published version of the contrast. So, really? quite a story. That yeah. is quite a story. All right, now the name viewers are less familiar with maybe is John Johnson. What were his contributions to UVM? Well, he made enormous contributions to UVM, to the city of Burlington, and to the state. John Johnson was a man of many, many talents. Uh, he was a surveyor. So the area of town around Main Street and the Green, uh, South Prospect Street and so on, he surveyed that and UVM still has those original documents. Uh, he also was an architect, not formally trained, but he designed important elements of Grass Mount, Old Mill, the Pomeroy Building, and so on. He was also a builder, uh, <laughs> and UVM's library uh, has some of his original invoices. He charged 75 cents for every window in the Pomeroy Building. <laughs> Got to watch out for inflation in these early years. That's crazy. All right. James Marsh, who was university president from 1826 to 1833, did a lot to increase UVM's reputation as an academic institution. Who was he and what did he do? James Marsh uh, became president uh, when he was in his early 30s and he began to shift the university curriculum away from a tightly structured approach in which everybody uh, marches in lockstep to approach that for us today is much more modern. Uh, he developed the idea of elective courses, which was pretty revolutionary. He developed what basically we see today as continuing education programs all over the country. Let's say you were uh, a surveyor in downtown Burlington. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to improve your math skills. Well, you could then go to the University of Vermont, sharpen up your trigonometry, and just then improve your, um, uh, you know, your business uh, activities. Uh, so 
so Marsh was uh, very uh, important on that score. He also was important philosophically. He uh, wrote a very important preface to a philosophical book of Samuel Taylor Coleridge that was published in the United States in 1829 by Chauncey Goodrich, who lived on College Street, his house still stands, uh, and that had a major impact on the young Ralph Waldo, Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, in the Boston Concord area. So uh, again, another man of many talents we see. Are people who take the tour surprised that there is so much history in, in one area? I think everybody is. Even people who've lived in Burlington all their lives or who uh, work or uh, have been around the University of Vermont are quite surprised to, uh, to hear how rich this history is. Well, the historic tour of UVM runs now through October 10th. Tours are free and open to the public. That's a great deal. Mm -hmm. Organizers ask visitors to register either at the website, which is on the screen, or you can call 802-656-8673. And as you mentioned earlier, you're still learning new things as well. And people are free just to come at the last minute as well. That just gives us a rough idea uh, of who's going to be there every Saturday morning at 10. Terrific. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.